Hi guys, when you start, dive into building these voice driven applications. The code can feel a bit uh, strange. Oh, it doesn't follow the usual pattern that you used to. Example, let's, let's quickly look at this white cat. Example. So you encountered new concepts like transport. Uh, TTS LLM, TTS LLM, uh, STT you might be familiar with, um, and then you have to these pipelines, and then there are these event handlers. So, so why do we really need all of these constructs to build this uh, voice application? So, so I was looking for quite a while to find something that explains things from a, a more fundamental, more uh, first principles. And I found this very nice documentation by PagCard. Essentially, so this, this diagram shows you the pipeline in, in, in a single diagram. What happens here is that transport input your microphone, you just say something, who was the first US president, and goes to STT service, speech to text service, which transcribes into text and gets aggregated into LM context, this format, which is a system or user roles that goes to LM service. And then the LM producer an answer to it. That's a good question. George Washington that goes into TTS service, which produces audio after every sentence, for example. And the text also goes to a context aggregator, which gets added to the LLM context so that the display to the user and, and the user can decision. So this flow essentially captures the, the is common to all, almost all voice driven applications. There's a input, speech to text, language model, LLM, TTS. And so all of these three components are concatenated together. Just that they are not concatenated in the standard way. They are, they are, they, they, there's a, Fundamental concept that's used here is that of frames. So every module takes input frames of a particular type, outputs frame of a particular type. So for example, audio frames that go into the first module. And those audio frames are transcribed by STD service to tokens, which are text tokens. And then yeah, those, those text tokens are aggregated to LLM. LLM outputs the text frames, text tokens again. They're streamed out. And then TTS service takes some of them like uh, from, from a sentence and it covers into add audio and then picks the tokens corresponding. So it aggregates tokens for a particular sentence and gives the audio for it. And these text tokens are again aggregated for the LLM. So, so if you're familiar with the transformer, uh, how tokens are transformed step by step, this is this is a frame transformer. I'd like to call it a frame transformer architecture where frames of particular type transformed at every step into a frame of different type until you go all the way to the output. So yeah, and get by this nice architecture overview of Diagram of frame transformers have uh, frames are transformed. So from the input, you get audio raw frames. The STT converts into transcription frames, essentially text, but maybe it has a duration and this and that. And then that gets aggregated, them which creates these streams out these text frames. Text frames are are converted into audio frame by DTS and text frames also go to the LLMs. Um, so, so this very nice diagram showing how 
each of these modules transforms is this a frame transformer and so on its own type of frame and things. Uh, so again, the question is why why do we need to have this conceptual frame transformer model for, the, for these applications? And then I, it's the crux of understanding getting a intuition of, of these voice applications. Yeah, and before you answer the question, just uh, a couple of other, other analogies. So the, think of the, these frames as packages on a conveyor belt, and each contains a specific type of cargo, for example, audio, data, text, and LM responses. Each of the modules, like I said, converts these frames into the output type. And frames can also flow down both downstream and like we discussed and upstream for errors and controls and then so if you build more advanced applications, um the, the there's a bidirectional flow frames. Right? And like uh, we discussed, frame processors can do anything, but for real time, and the keyword is real time. Uh and that, that's a core constraining principle for most of the voice driven applications. Uh, these frame processes can be speech to text, LLM processor, text to speech, text to audio from text. You can even have image generation modules, which takes text frames, puts an image URL. Right? So, uh, so the, you, you can have your own type of frame processor inserted into pipeline. So, this conceptual, to implementing this conceptual model, Pipeline is, is the closest programming primitive fits this conceptual model of a frame transform. So you start with the transport input. Transport essentially is where a raw audio gets into the system or, or text gets out as, as raw audio. Uh, so you start with the input, speech to text, LLM, TTS, then output. So yes, STTLM, TTL are all modules that can be defined where you can use many different API services for LLM, STT, DBRAM, TTS, Cartesia, and there's several options with different trade-offs. You can even define pipelines as more complex with parallel image processing and audio processing. You know, get. So, uh, so that's why pipeline is is, is a very general abstraction for building these voice driven applications. Um, like we discussed, input was frames processing transcription LLM TTS. Frames flow upstream if issues occur. Finally, output audio frames is the transport. Right, so, so coming back to the question of why why this design, you would also design the, the first first cut of you know, the naive design of this uh, kind of application would be that you just concatenate speech to text LLM and TTS it's one after another, and that can do the same job. So, so why have this complicated frame transformer architecture? The, Key idea is that on real time, and for real time, if you can find it, you will you'll pay for aggregation cost at every module. So, for example, speech to text output will uh, only when the full output is generated, you'll get the text from there. Then that goes into LLM again. You wait for the full output to be generated, even though the units, the tokens, the frames are being streamed, uh, they're not. Uh, it's hard to utilize or exploit that fact that these tokens are being streamed. So, but for real time, it's extremely essential that uh, you you don't wait for the whole output to be generated by any particular module. You you work data flow at, at the stream, and so when when a module is just ready to work, it has just just enough input for to create some output. Uh, for example, TTS module, uh, it, it should be able to create an output so that the next uh, module in the pipeline can start work. So, so to enable this this real time flow of frames, uh, so that the user doesn't feel 
too long for the for the uh, response to come back and then can start in, for example immediately interrupt in in the middle so for that it's essential to uh, this this frame transformer approach so that's it that's a quick overview of of the core architecture and the conception model behind voice driven applications are the many complexities on top of it that that we'll discuss in some other slide other videos.